Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. This afternoon, we are lucky to have two great hosts, Kevin Session, Pres Sessions, sorry, Kevin, President of Talent Quest, and our talent management expert, and then Matt Gilley, co-founder of Intellum and a learning management specialist. So today we are going to give you an introduction to automated learning management systems and hopefully explain how an LMS simplifies training and development. All right, well, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin and Matt. And before I do that, I want to let you know we will be monitoring the questions. So if you have any um, questions or comments along the way, please enter that in the section to the right that's titled questions, not the chat box. And we will get to you as soon as we can. Thank you. Thanks, Dallas. Uh, Matt, good afternoon. Hello, Kevin. And good afternoon to everybody on the phone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We're looking forward to the, um, to the next uh, hour or so. And uh, again, as Dallas mentioned, if you have any questions as we go through this, please submit them and, and we will address them at the end. Um, okay, so let's, um, let's jump right in here and uh, take a look at um, you know, what we have planned for today. So what I thought I would start with first, and this is something that comes up a lot when we talk about um, really any of the modules that, that are part of our talent performance management suite is, is really what is the talent management life cycle and where does, in this case, learning fit into that? So I figured I'd start with kind of talking a little bit about the talent management life cycle <clears throat> and what the different um, components are that we're covering in each of these phases. So when we talk about the selection and on onboarding phase of talent management, uh, what we're talking about here and what the software is going to address is how do you uh, attract talent and then how do you source that talent? Um, how do you assess their fit and evaluate um, their, their fit to that particular role? And then lastly, how do we onboard them into the organization? So the, the modules that we have in our talent management suite that address that is we have a, a personality-based assessment which allows for job profiling. Uh, there's a real in-depth employee profile. Um, that allows and helps with the onboarding process. And then the learning module itself um, can help automate uh, components of the onboarding process as well. When we talk about the, the management phase of the, the life cycle, um, we're addressing things such as how you set goals uh, throughout the organization and how you align those goals to corporate goals to ensure that, again, everybody's working in the same direction. How do we measure performance on an ongoing basis? And then lastly, how do we reward performance? So the components or the modules that we have um, in the suite that address that is there's a goal module, uh, the performance management module, uh, and a compensation module. When we talk about the development phase, this is really going to be the primary portion that we're going to focus on today. We're talking about uh, how to solve and address identifying gaps within uh, your workforce. And then from that, creating a learning plan and learning program to address those gaps. Uh, how do we coach and train employees? and uh, measure their progress against some of those development activities and learning paths uh, pass that we've uh, just identified. So the modules that we have that address that, there's a 360 degree survey module to really, again, understand competency proficiencies and gaps, um, and then the learning module itself that where you can really, based on those gaps, um, you know, address through some learning activities. And then lastly, in the retention phase, we're talking about uh, reinforcement of culture measuring engagement, promoting from within, uh, and succession planning activities. And so the, the remaining modules that we have that address that are, are the succession module as well as the uh, just a, a general kind of organizational survey module as well. Okay, so I hope that helps at least kind of sets the framework and the tone for um, what is covered in, in the software suite itself and where learning uh, and development fit into the overall talent management lifecycle. Okay, so Let's maybe transition and talk a little bit about uh, an LMS, and, and Matt is our <clears throat> learning expert. I, maybe uh, I'll hand this over to you to, to discuss. Yeah, and you know, an LMS, I had a call this morning, and, and uh, it's funny. If you look at when we first started in, in 2000, I don't even know that that term was, was fully fleshed out. Uh, they mm -hmm. were just systems, right? And then as, we, uh, as we've progressed uh, over the last, really the last six or seven years, I would say, um, the industry really has matured, uh, and at this point, I think folks generally know what an LMS is. Though my call this morning, the person calls it an LSM. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I guess it, you know the, the the intent was the same, 
Uh, but the short of it is a learning management system is, uh, is an application built to help augment uh, your training department. Um, it is an auditing mechanism, uh, particularly with uh, industries that are highly regulated. You know, the need to uh, report instantaneously for things like joint commission if you're a healthcare company or uh, OSHA if you're a manufacturing company or EPA if uh, you have stormwater issues. Sexual harassment, obviously, which varies from state to state. Um, and then it's a way, you know, so those are kind of the compliance-driven reasons why individuals would purchase a learning management system or license a learning management system. But, you know, outside of that and where I think you and I are really trying to drive the industry is more how do we engage the employee? How do we allow the employee to progress through the company, through the ranks? How do we identify an individual who's either struggling or, you know, what we or I sort of colloquially or, uh, refer to as kind of our, um, our all-stars, right? How do we identify those people? And you can do that through the learning management system and the integration um, with, uh, with the TQ um, assessment and, and the other suites. So generally speaking, um, you know, we jokingly in the sales process say, you know, at the end of the day, why does someone buy a learning management system? They buy it for the reporting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's not the sexiest of reasons to make a purchase uh, for a software uh, license like ours, but that really brass tacks, that's why folks use it. Now, in between, you know, not having one and purchasing one for reporting, there's a ton of strategy we can put in there to make it its own ecosystem um, for employee betterment. Right. Um, and that's something that we, we really try and, and press our clients on. Don't view it just as a reporting mechanism for OSHA, but more a conduit for delivering messages, some of which track. Right. Um, so, so some, you know, again, just to, to reiterate there, some, some real common examples and common uses that we see organizations, um, you know, implementing an LMS for, you know, obviously the automation is great and you want to automate that, all those components and consolidate it and provide a, a, a um, consistent vehicle and place for them to go for, for learning content. But really, again, some of those uses tend to be around onboarding efforts, yeah. right? So. Um, when we look at things like um, signing an employee handbook and, and activities such as that, compliance-based training, which you mentioned is a big one, um, and all kinds of collaborative learning, um, and, and really, again, ongoing employee development and kind of gap-based development. Right. And, uh, you know, that's where, again, the, the integration and the tie-in of learning as it relates in, to other activities such as performance and, and talent is, is really huge because you can identify those gaps in one area and then know, all right, now what are we going to do about it? And, and that's where the, the learning piece really comes in nicely to, to address that. Absolutely. And, and what we find, you've got the industry in terms of clientele breaks down to, you know, your, your Fortune 500 folks. And, and they've got a use case that's, that's typically different than, let's say, your small or your mid-sized business. Your small or mid-sized business has most likely grown, grown through acquisition uh, or through th some, some explosive accelerant, all right? Now, the smaller or mid-sized business, while growing, while they may have grown their sales staff and their support literatures and, and so forth, they, they have not typically grown their HR department. Yeah. And so although they're a larger business and now exposed um, to regulatory hurdles, they don't have the background in place um, to effectively manage those requirements. And that's really where the learning management system comes in because it is an all-in-one it's not just e-learning, it's, it's webinars, it's instructor-led training, it's read, print, sign, documentation, clearly it's e-learning. Um, it's watching a video and taking a quiz. It's, it's the full cycle of training, whether it be required um, or you know, opt-in, you know, employee betterment. So yeah. it, it is that full suite and that's how it ties in so well with the talent piece. This one last point on that, um, you know, as we grow, as we get geographically diverse inside of a, a company, by we, I mean the client, um, the consistency of message is something that um, we can very easily lose. You have certain um, subject matter experts who are phenomenal at delivering um, a, a certain topic, and then you've got maybe a quote-unquote subject matter expert who isn't so much an expert, is, but is more just the most tenured person who may have driven the forklift the longest. Yeah. And we've put this person in, in charge of doing forklift um, uh, recurrent training. So you know, that's something that uh, the consistency of message, that's something that the learning management system as a platform can ensure. Uh, and then from an auditing perspective, you're able to audit your instructors and say, well, this person is having trouble uh, uh, per, uh, relaying this particular topic to this 
um, the student base. So yep. there's, again, auditing across the board. Yeah, it makes good sense. Good. All right, um, let's actually do a quick little poll. would love to um, hear from those of you out there is um, how many of you are currently utilizing a, a learning management system? Um, so um, let's go ahead and, and take a look at that and uh, hopefully everybody is seeing the, the poll now and we're going to give you uh, a minute or two here to, to respond and um, then we'll, we'll while we wait there. and I, I do I, I present at, at many conferences and it, it always comes up you know are you you're using the LMS the follow-up to that um, is do you like your LMS <laughs> uh, and uh, it's it's pretty uh, universal uh, the disdain for um, many many companies in our space um, which is unfortunate because it's given our space a bit of a black eye but um, you know the focus on the client uh, and at the end of the day Kevin you know this is a people business yeah you know um, the relationship and the the usage is people centric so definitely has to be a partnership Sounds great. Well, uh, it looks like we're in here, and it looks about like uh, close to 60% of you um, are using some sort of an LMS uh, now. Hmm. Um, so that's interesting. Interesting that's pretty and, high, and good uh, numbers. Yeah. I wish we had the follow up of how many people are satisfied with their <laughs> LMS. But yeah. If can... you're if you're satisfied, uh, raise your raise your uh, your digital hand. <laughs> and we also had someone chime in that. They are using something as an LMS, but it's not a true LMS. Gotcha. Yeah, something like Adobe Connect or, or something like that, yeah. Yep, yeah, good. All right, so uh, let's keep on rolling here. So, all right, we're going to uh, transition. Most, uh, a lot of the times here when we do these things, people are very eager to get in to actually see the product. And so we, we, uh, we promise to keep the, um, the slide portion of this very, very limited. But as we transition and move into a demo, there's, there's really kind of five things that we're going to touch on as we go throughout, um, and really five ways an LMS can help simplify learning. So the first of which is to manage the curriculum materials and instructors that uh, you have inside the organization. So we'll touch on that in, in a variety of different ways. Uh, additionally, we want to talk about, um, and we will touch on how an LMS can simplify learning through monitoring registration and particip participation in your learning activities. Uh, this gets to some of the compliance-related stuff. Um, being able to deliver content in a variety of different ways, whether that's uh, instructor-led training, whether that's self-paced learning, whether that's mobile um, you know, capabilities, whether it's video, there's, there's lots of things that can be done there. Um, encouraging employee engagement uh, is something that uh, it can simplify and address and which we'll, we'll touch on as well. And then lastly, uh, a method for following through on performance reviews and uh, for achievements of goals, um, whether these are developmental-based goals or, again, so that kind of that gap-based analysis. So we'll, uh, we'll make sure that we touch on these things as, uh, as we go, but um, we're going to now kind of transition over into the demo. But before we, we do, Matt, anything else to add that we haven't touched on thus far? Uh, we touched on it, but I did, I did want to reiterate uh, because folks just mentally tend to pigeonhole a learning management system into that 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 compliance bucket. Um, it really is an all-in-one solution. I mean, at the end of the day, like we've talked about, it's 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 a platform, a conduit for delivering yep. messages. Um, so just to Great. keep an open mind there. Yep. That way. Very good. All right. Well, let's let's kind of transition into the demo, and um, you know, again, as you have the questions that come up as we go through this, please uh, please type them in. Um, and uh, we'll make sure and we address them in, in due time. So I'm going to log into a, a demo company here. This is a, a demo environment that we use. It's a fictitious company. Sometimes people ask me who Verum Analytics is. It's a made-up company here. Um, but we're going to log in as a manager. Um, and one of the things that we can do with our software, which is pretty neat, is, is really provide all of this branding and these branding elements. So this is a made-up company, but we do this for our clients to have so the software has their look and their feel um, which can be real impactful to the organization. Um, the, the software itself is very um, task-driven in nature, and one of the nice things about it is when we, once we get things set up, as you roll it out and use it internally, the system's going to proactively notify your users when they need to do something. Um, so if, um, if you're first rolling things out and it's a, you want to, again, address some um, compliance-based stuff um, around sexual harassment or um, OSHA related stuff, who knows what it may be, um, emails can automatically go out from the system to your employees to let them know that they've been enrolled in that class and they need to complete it. Um, 
is as we think about some of the gap-based learning on the tail end of a performance review, for example, uh, we know that um, I'm weak in a particular competency of strategic thinking. The system can automatically present the learning content that addresses that, and my manager can enroll me in it, in it and boom, I get an email and a task to complete that. So very task-driven, the system proactively notifies you what you need to do. When you log in, um, you're going to, each user is going to be taken to uh, their home page. And what we see front and center is really a task dashboard. Now, this example has lots of tasks um, all going on to show the different areas of the system. But one of the nuns will know with, uh, notice at the bottom here is my current enrollments. And in this case, I tend to I have actually have an enrollment for hazard communication. So front and center, I would have gotten those emails about what I need to do and the courses I need to complete, uh, in addition to any other talent activities I have going on. But I see specifically the one for hazard communication. So within a, a click, I can actually be into uh, completing that particular course. A um, couple, one other thing that I uh, wanted to mention is that each user also has the ability to get to the learning components through our flyout menu navigation as well to be able to get to your enrollments in another view, your course catalog, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but again, nice, easy, uh, quick way to actually launch into that within one click. Um, I can actually be into that particular course. This example is just a video um, that we can see. There's the ability to add additional documents to this. We can actually even, in some examples you'll see, um, embed an assessment at the end of a learning course, um, a confirmation that's kind of an electronic signature that they've read it and, and confirmed that they've read it. Um, but again, quick and easy, the ability to kind of launch in to the course, um, play the video, and you know, you're know you off and running with this particular learning course. So very, very simple from that perspective. Um, I want to get back over um, you know, into some of the, the other areas um, and look at another view of what I can see for my enrollment. So um, this is, again, we're in the learning module, and if I go to my enrollment um, tab here, I can see any of the other courses that I'm enrolled in. So that was just one example of a particular course. Matt, maybe talk a little bit about the, um, you know, what we have set up here as far as the different types of um, courses, the learning paths, the instructor-led, the self-paced stuff. Is, is right. So uh, again, a, a, I think a, a common misstep in the in the purchase of an LMS and a talent suite is that you're going to need someone uh, to manage your learning management system, right? And and we sort of take the opposite tack, which is, hold on, there's a management is actually in learning management system. That word, okay? <laughs> so this should be uh, used to augment what you do, not um, a a a new job. All right. right. So. What we're seeing here are the different types of learning. Uh, some of it you see kind of our traffic light, uh, red dot, yellow dot. Uh, a green dot means you've completed it and it would fall under the history tab. But a learning path is a bundle of courses that could share um, a, a commonality. In other words, uh, I need to take this learning path because I work this job or I'm in this division or I, I reside in this state. All right, this is going to be typically an automatically enrolled course. As you see here, we can have different sections broken up. Uh, this one happens to be set up to complete in order, which gives us uh, the ability to have them stair step through, kind of using the collegiate model, um, you know, where we go our, you know, our, our freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, in my case, uh, fifth and tried to uh, six year senior. Uh, <laughs> but you've got the ability to walk through and have them do things um, sequentially. Uh, you do have the option of saying, hey, look, you don't have to do it sequentially. You can do take three out of four. Um, or you can say take all five, but you can do them in any order you want. So the learning path, again, is a bundle of courses, um, most typically required to complete in order. Um, if we toggle back to the enrollments page, you'll see instructor-led training. Now, we're not just tracking ILT in the traditional sense where we're we're coming to a um, I'll give you an example, uh, the, the big, I can't use their name, but um, it's a big race car series that most people know. Um, they actually, the folks who work at the tracks um, have their badges scanned and that scanning data is automatically loaded into the learning management system. So their attendance is tracked in the LMS. 
Um, it's a it's an audience that isn't overly technical with regards to you know like e-learning type stuff. But I mean, clearly they're they're very technical in being able to tell that your car is five ounces out of weight, right? So right. they understand technology, just may not maybe not our technology. So with the scanning technology, the ability to integrate with WebEx and GoToMeeting and GoToTraining. Um, and then, of course, you know, then you've got your, your traditional uh, instructor-led training where you're going face-to-face -face, um, and attending. The other thing uh, that we track, um, and you see here an, an example, it's a nice little, little visual, um, you've got the ability to launch an assessment. So you might have them attend a webinar. I get this question all the time. How do we know they were paying attention? Uh, well, we don't necessarily know that. I mean, you can always job the, you know, the, the online uh, um, attendance data of a WebEx session. Hopefully no one's doing that right now, but you can always leave your, your window open and then go eat lunch. Um, so we suggest either a confirmation button or taking it a step further, the ability to create an assessment. And the assessment is what would um, tell us that they, they learned um, from the session and, and that they attended you know, from start to finish. As well, that assessment offers question level uh, tracking so that we can see maybe where we're deficient in our presentation. He, 90% of the people missed this question. Yeah. Well, it might, that might be a delivery issue. Right. 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 Um, and then clearly we have the ability to track, um, you know, e-learning, like you said, the read print sign, uh, where we might have something site specific, you know, like an egress, you know, fire evacuation module. We need the, the fire warden um, to, uh, to confirm that they understand the, uh, uh, the procedures. And uh, we've got the ability to upload a video and encode it using a technology called H.264, which enables you to view that video via mobile. And then we've got um, the traditional e-learning that would be created using a, a third-party tool like Articulate or Captivate or Camtasia. Right. The so other thing I just want to mention while we're here is the, um, the ability, and this particularly in professional organizations, uh, the ability to track external credits. So if a user goes, uh, let's say they're a physician and they go uh, off-site uh, and they attend like an AMA accreditation and they get four hours of continuing education, that physician who works for a hospital can go in and update their having attended uh, what we call an external credit. So it allows some learner-driven um, uh, content as well. Um, you mentioned the catalog. And goes back to kind of that that paradigm of of you know, let's engage the learner, let's not not pigeonhole ourselves into hey this is just for compliance training. I mean, people literally, when I used to go to cocktail parties, uh, when I got out of college, if, if they asked me what I did and I said e-learning, they'd be like, are you that dude that makes me take the Series Seven recertification? And I'm like, <laughs> yes, I'm sorry about that, you know. And so the catalog lets us kind of say, hey, look, Kevin, you know, you might need to take your Series Seven, and I'm sorry, you do work for a bank. Um, but you know what, and, and you know, this is not a joke, I mean, we have some clients who put content in there on how to keep your Christmas tree from burning down, how to protect your kids from, you know, when they trick or treat, and there's all kinds of ways that we can engage the learner. Now, the more interactive we can make the catalog in terms of the content we offer, the more likely they are to view this as a resource or a carrot instead of just a stick. Yeah, and, and this is great. I mean, again, you know, so many people, as Matt, you said, think about learning, and it's the, it's the stuff that the training that has to be done yeah. by HR, yeah. uh, or, you know, uh, that HR pushes out. And, and, and that's great. And those are things that we do need to do. They're very important. Um, but when you really want to take the organization to the next level and you think about developing your employees, um, it's really, really helpful to get into that employee development kind mm -hmm. of mindset. And, yeah. you know, the, as we can see here, this catalog example is, uh, is a good one. We have a lots of different courses, all of the images that we put in here and we, we, we can make this as uh, as fancy as, a, as an yep. organization wants with um, the images here. But we can see we've got these categories. I mean, you know, business skills. If I want to click in and see what courses do we have here at Verum Analytics that address business skills, I can go in um, and I can see what those are. If we want to turn in the turn on the ability for your students to employees to rate courses, um, you know, that becomes visible. But I can scan through and see what's in here and around business skills. Or maybe I need to to touch up on my computer skills, I'm, I'm deficient in an Excel, I can come in and see that there's a course on, you know, uh, Excel basics or PowerPoint or Word basics um, to be able to do that. Um, you know, things around sales activities, whether it's effective selling and um, you get the point that lots of different opportunities in here to really take e-learning and, and learning and development to the next level. Yeah. Um, 
And what's great as well is where we see some of our um, most um, cutting edge clients or strategic clients when they think about talent management in general and really tying everything together from how they uh, select and onboard people, how they measure performance through automating performance reviews and using 360 degree surveys for developmental purposes and succession planning. One of the things that they're doing so nice is, is they're taking all of their learning content. So the things we see in this category, in these categories, and they're tying them to their competency models yep. that they're using to measure performance exactly. and development and succession. And the great piece there, as we talked about, is, is really being able to then tie <clears throat> the learning to that gap-based um, uh, analysis that's identified through those other activities such as performance and 360s, et cetera. I totally agree. And I, I think um, to piggyback on that, right, um, you know, we are, we are huge collectively, you and I, on, on getting a return on investment, right? Yeah. And if we just focus on um, the return on investment being – hey, if OSHA comes and audits you, you have a cool report. That's not really an ROI unless OSHA comes and audits you and you can prove that you just were not fined $50,000, mm -hmm. right? That's a tough ROI to make. So the ROI instead is, you know, how do we identify those who should be managers? Yeah. How do we, you know, backfill? How, oh, we got brain drain. How do we promote from within? You know, how do we identify, again, those all-stars? Um, that's a great ROI. You yeah. know, the other ROI is, and you'll see, you know, to your point on the catalog that's fully fleshed out, the ROI is most often the clients who are best at doing this, we drive retention. Yeah. And, you know, my minimum cost of hire at my, you know, my uh, client that might have like an eight, ten dollars, that's eighteen hundred dollars an employee. Right. It's not insignificant. Right. So if we can drive retention 10, 15, 20, 40 percent. A tremendous ROI. The way we do that, again, to your point, is engaging the learner and further sort of the mantra than the drum that we beat is meet them on their own terms. Right. Because there's a very diverse learning segment, right? I mean, you've yeah. got your, your boomers, and I don't even know what the newest generation is called, your crazies. <laughs> um, you know, these kids that don't even email, you know, they text. Right. Or they Instagram. I mean, email is foreign to them. So, that's a wide swath of different learning um, types. So the catalog allows us, again, to, to present um, multiple learning options and, again, to engage. We had a question on how to create a learning path. Um, we, can, we can go through that today if we want. I mean, it's super simple. Um, I, I think it probably just given time, um, Dallas, what I may do is just take that person one-on-one uh, -on -one and I can show them how to do it. But the short of it is you create a learning path and you name it. Let's call it um, Sales 101. And the next step would be to map the courses that relate to Sales 101 uh, to the learning path. And, and by map, all I mean is you're clicking from a drop down, you're choosing from the courses available, and you're associating with the learning path. Um, and then you can, there's a setting that allows you to say, do we look back? Do we give them credit for having completed something historically? Uh, do we require that, to, that they complete an order? Do we allow them to complete it in any order? Or do we say take four or five or, or whatever it may be? But it's, mm -hmm. it's literally as simple as uh, naming it, associating the courses, and then the next step would be do we want to automatically enroll those individuals into that sales? So does anyone in the sales, anyone we're onboarding, automatically has to get sales 101. And then from a talent piece, we can go back and say, are they struggling? And if yes, have they completed sales 101? Right. You know, I mean, that's a that's a one to one relationship. So I'll, I'll be happy to flesh that out fully. Um, but generally speaking, that's how it works. Yeah. And that's a, and that's a great point when we kind of talk about uh, another um, great way. And the work, you know, we're seeing kind of some of the more advanced um, users using uh, a, a learning management is to to basically think about what are the train is, is you look at your jobs and the positions you have in your organization. What is the learning content that they need? In that particular job, so if you, as you have your employees moving around um, in the organization from one position to the next, um, you can actually, when they move into that, they can be automatically enrolled right. into the learning path of courses that are needed for that particular job. Yeah, um, it's a great way to again make sure that transition is good. Um, they, they get the the basic skill set they need, and, and again continue with that that ongoing development. And, and I think you know. 
and this is not to, to toot our own horn, but I think from a talent quest perspective, one thing that that we're able to bring to the table is when when we say that, and and again, typically going back to my my small or medium sized business, when we say that, I think there's what is it paralysis by analysis, yeah. right? And they think, well, wait, you know, I don't have that today. How in the world am I going to do an audit and understand, you know, what uh, what job title needs what content and that's where the consultative side of what we offer really comes in i mean you this is a very much a partnership we can go in and and peel back the onion and say okay where are you deficient okay i understand uh you know where are we you know hemorrhaging employee headcount okay well we think we've identified why you know we might be hiring the wrong people right or we might not be training them well um or their manager might stink you know there's 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 very much a, a full offering which definitely differentiates us from many in the space who's just come, who just come in and offer the software. They offer you uh, consultation on how to use the software, right. but not so much the back office stuff that says, hey, this is a piece of software that's going to, again, augment what you do, support what you do, buttress the plan, but we can also put the plan together. Right. Yeah. And along those lines, um, do you work with the clients to develop the curriculum? Yeah. Or do they choose, um, this is a question that came in, do they develop it, do you develop it, do you work together, can you choose? All the above. Okay. Yeah, all the above. I mean, uh, most typically, a cl- I mean, of course, for instructor-led training that's being done currently, that's that's probably a, a non-issue. Now, for instructor-led training, if you want to transition to e-learning, you use a tool like Articulate, or I would strongly suggest a tool like Articulate, but there are others, Captain the Camtasia and, and, the, and the rest, Adobe uh, Presenter, uh, to, to repurpose that, uh, let's say, that instructor-led PowerPoint into something that can be delivered over the web. Um, if the subject matter expertise does not exist in-house, uh, we have a, a wide range of what we call SMEs, subject matter experts, who can work uh, to develop the content from scratch and make it extremely specific uh, to the client. And then, and then from a Talent Quest perspective, you know, we have a lot of uh, you know, ready-made content that can be customized um, for the client, you know, we yeah. give you a little bit of a head start. So it just depends on the on the client. And, yeah. and, then, and then, lastly, I mean, we we, we have the relationships with um, other yeah, the third know, party third guys. party providers yeah. of, of e learning content. You know, the skill softs of the world, EJ four, EJ four, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, for some of our financial services related clients, there's there's uh, you know other ones, um, Bankers Edge, Bankers Edge that address that. So. Yeah. Lots of different ways, that, but absolutely is is it can be a combination, and most likely is a combination of leveraging the the content that you already have that you've been using, whether it's just PowerPoint um, or Word documents, and converting that into e-learning. Um, your instructor led, and then also maybe then identifying all right where are the gaps that we have in our learning activities today, and then maybe that's where we where we leverage um, you know the third party relationships that we have to to bring that e-learning into the fold. I will say on that, and I mentioned the term subject matter expert, um, as part of the audit that that we would do, um, what I find, and I, I talk to folks about this all the time, and it, it's, it's sort of an aha moment, but to me it seems so obvious. You know, a trainer may not actually be the best person or the most knowledgeable about the product on which they're training. Yeah. That might be a sales guy, you know? Yeah. It might be a VP of sales. Heck, it could be the CEO. So as part of the audit, we may... We, we try to anyway, we try to identify who the true subject matter experts are. Now, the trainer might end up delivering that subject matter expertise, but at least we've sourced it from the one and only, you right. know? So right. that's that's part of the the engagement. Yeah, good point. You know, one of the things I want to mention is, you know, it's nice. We've So we've talked about once we've completed all this corning, uh, all these courses, and we see the enrollment activity, you know, I, one of the things we talked about was the employee profile. Um, and I want to show you that real quick because what's nice about, um, again, having a, an, an integrated system of learning and talent and performance is in this profile where we can see everything about the employee, you know, their gender, their date of birth, their hire, their position, their manager. Um, we get into things like their willingness to relocate or their desired position, um, et cetera. We also track employment p- information, internal and external positions. Um, job skills, language skills. The nice thing about this stuff in here is we also can really look at and see what have they completed um, in, you know, from a learning perspective. So this other education area, any course that is completed uh, in the learning module, it automatically updates their profile so we can see 
what it is they've completed. And then from there, we have the ability to search on that. So if we wanted to search through um, our employee population and go to an area where we want to see, gosh, who in the company has completed um, the leadership training that, that we have out there, but has also been real rated very high from a performance standpoint is willing to relocate. Um, those are things that we can we can now search on through the talent search capability that we have in, in, this, in the solution. So I could go down and really look into this additional search area and you know go to the other education area. And again, these may be things that were completed um, courses that exist in the learning module. And again, now I can search who's completed this dealing with problem uh, coworkers course. Um, very easy for me to see and then identify and search through to find the results of the people um, that address that. So um, very nice from that perspective. Okay, so um, you know, as we continue on um, here, we've kind of talked about some of the, the basics of the, of the learning piece um, and what we can do activity-wise. We've talked about um, some of the way people are enrolled into learning, both from automatically enrolled, um, how managers can enroll them, you know, into uh, courses based on gaps that are identified from, from rating information, um, moving from one job to another. Uh, those are some really common uh, things about that. Uh, on top of all that, there's going to be endless ways to report on this information, and, and we're going to touch on that here in a little bit um, as we go through it, but also wanted to um, maybe pause and we're going to take a look to see um, any other questions that have come through that, that need to be answered right here at the moment. Um, we have one that um, the question is, does the LMS support learning on multiple platforms such as mobile? Yeah. So good question, and, and, and the answer to that is, is absolutely yes. Um, you know, all of our um, solutions are mobile enabled, and the, um, the, the learning is a big, you know, means for that, is, and it's a popular way, mobile is a popular way to, to really access um, learning, you know, this day and age, and especially as we continue forward, everybody's got a, a mobile device. So um, it is mobile enabled, and um, basically, uh, we chose to, to go the route of a, of a mobile website versus having to download a specific app. So um, it doesn't matter what type of mobile device your employees have in their hand, um, the system is going to recognize when they try to, to access um, a course or an enrollment that they're doing so from a mobile um, device and it's going to take them to the mobile version. Um, in addition to that, Matt had mentioned earlier um, the different ways in which we can um, basically wrap courses, and he mentioned, um, you know, some different standards. The tools that we have and the system itself, when you um, lo upload an e-learning course, it, it, it'll it actually automatically convert that so that it is um, mobile enabled um, and is uh, viewable and accessible and optimized for that mobile environment. So, um, absolutely, we certainly do. Okay, Dallas, any other questions that have come in right at the moment here? Track. Okay, very good. All right, so um, you know, from here again, we've talked about one of the other neat things is is we want to look at is um, when we start thinking about um, learning in general, and we talk about um, you know the 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 reporting and so um, and the ways to report on that. We've got many different um, types of reports that we can get in here. Um, a lot of standard, off the shelf stuff. We have them all organized. Um, you know, by module so we can see all of the information related to that very, very quickly. Um, some neat capabilities and there's um, really not enough time to really address every um, reporting option here, but some of the neat capabilities um, that we can do around the learning is the ability to kind of schedule um, reports um, very easily. So there's certain learning pieces that we want to look at on an ongoing basis, we can certainly do so. Um, and um, we're going to touch on the, the whole reporting piece here um, momentarily, but it made me think of one piece that um, I did want to touch on um, that I failed to mention earlier is really around, this is an optional thing that you can leverage through the LMS is, is blogs and forums. And um, so we have in here, as we see, if we wanted to turn on a blogging feature for um, your users to um, really try to provide another means for communication and collaboration 
um, we can do so. And so here we got some, some blogging capabilities. You can start a conversation, you can have um, employees respond to it and people can see that. Additionally, another mean for that is forums. And so we can uh, really leverage uh, a forum capability to, to post things in there, get people to respond, um, you know, see what those responses are. Um, you know, in any way we can really dig into the details. Here's something on Thanksgiving lunch and we can see what people are gonna bring. Um, you know, again, you can see an ongoing, just a different way to communicate, collaborate, um, you know, within the learning uh, system itself. Um, I think just piggybacking on that. I mean, it's it's going back to that that sort of mantra of meeting the learner on their own terms and not pigeonholing the LMS into you know a, a reporting database for um, compliance training. And again, the the fact that we do have a uh, very diverse learning demographic, right? Yeah. Um, what we find is is both formal and informal, uh, depending on the the demographic uh, or their proficiency with technology. Uh, if we put up you know an eighteen year old in front of an online PowerPoint, uh, they're not going to be there long. Um, if instead you know if you look at that eighteen year old, if he's a Braves fan, um, he probably reads Dave O'Brien's blog on the AJC. Right. That's yep. how he learns. That's how he learns about the Braves. So if we're able to instead of you know, having that 18 year old that were onboarding for sales, instead of putting in front of the sales 101 learning path, we might have them read a blog and comment, maybe take a little quiz, you know? Yeah. So uh, there really are, you know, a multitude of ways to, to disseminate information to the system. And, and one of the, the, the other kind of really neat ways um, that uh, Matt, I want you to touch on, um, in addition to all of these, is the social, social collaboration tool that we have. Right. Um, it's an enterprise um, social collaboration tool called Tribe. Mm -hmm. um, and, it uh, can be fully integrated into the, the learning solution um, and is another way to kind of augment learning. Um, it can be used as the learning solution yeah. um, in some cases. Um, let's maybe talk about that. I don't mm -hmm. know if you want to, if we want to log in and kind of quickly show some people about that or certainly can. Yeah. Uh, um, talk through. Sure. Sure. Yeah. The, um, again, goes back to the different uh, learning methodologies. Um, Tribe Social is, is a tool that uh, is an informal learning tool. Um, it's a lot different in that we aren't necessarily worried about reporting, though we do have analytics. Um, and actually, you know what, now that I think about it, we probably, we should table Tribe, and, and I'd say Dallas, if in, the com in the comments, if they want a, um, a demo of Tribe, let's definitely set them up, because I know they want to see reporting, and we can't do both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but I I can talk through it for sure. Yeah. So you know tribe is a I mean I'll give you a for instance I I set up a tribe for my uh, little league team and my football my little league football pee wee team and my my baseball team and I'm also the director of the league. Um, if I were communicating in a traditional sense with those parents uh, and coaches, I would be using email, right? Well. One, I just loathe email. I mean, that's just, you know, we live email every day in our, our work environment. I'd prefer not to do it in, in my, uh, my private time. So I'm able to communicate uh, through Tribe with my different groups. It's, a, it's, it's uh, not a find and follow model, okay? Not a find and follow model a la LinkedIn, Facebook, and some of these other social tools. Um, it's not a Yammer or a Chatter in that it's a plug-in to Salesforce, for instance, that only your salespeople would use. This is a full, fully integrated piece with the learning management system. We can have tribes associated with learning, uh, meaning with a course. You might have breakout session. You might have uh, office hours of an instructor. Um, you could have, uh, you know, the company picnic's coming up. You know, where might we want to have it? Uh, it's a great employee engagement tool. And again, the beauty of it is it's, it's integrated with the LMS. Um, yeah, very good. All right, we want to show some of the reporting. Yeah, let's, let's go into the reporting. I, yeah, happy to do it. Um, did I hit something? Sorry. Let me see here. And then is it John? Is that what it is? I can go back. It's not a big deal. I can log in. What? It's not, it's not Lon Smith. I do know that. <laughs> good old Lon. And then was it? 
Okay. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. So we need to log in as a. Um, yeah, let's log in as an admin. An admin. All right. Give me one second. I'm actually going to. Um, did you turn sharing off? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me actually go from the back end, and I'll uh, I'll log in that way. And that way, we'll know we're logging in as an admin. And da da da. Dallas, how are we doing on questions over there? We've gotten to them all. Yay. Been, uh, sort of. I, I want more. <laughs> We've been bringing them up as they come in, which is working it out. Good. Good, good. All right, give me one sec. Um, the short of, import, uh, of reporting is that if we have it in the database, we can pull a report on it. So um, when we talk about the HR file, um, and uh, scroll down a little bit for me, and then we'll go to a little more. We'll go to accounts. Actually, turn sharing off. Well, you know what? We can probably go. Uh, we'll just go in here report. Yeah. So the short of it is, guys, um, if it's in the database, we can get it out. All right. Um, and not only can we get it out, in other words, can we report on it, but we also can sort by it. We can sum it. Um, we can create uh, custom reports. And you're looking here at a bunch of off the shelf reports that we offer, um, you know, for compliance stuff. Oh, who's going to be overdue for their CPR certification next 90 days allows us to schedule instructors at a certain location, um, you know, pass, fail. These are, I mean, I'd say when we do audits and we do annual audits on the reports, you know, most often reports that are pulled, this is probably going to get a client 85% um, of what they need just right off the bat. Um, these can be generated as CSV, HTML, PDF, uh, and actually Excel as well as CSV. Um, and uh, again, this is real-time data. We can pull it at the click of a button, um, and it's available off the shelf. Now, the other cool thing about the off-the-shelf is that an off-the-shelf report can actually be customized. So we can take, um, you know, completions last year, and we can see, you know, here's just data um, on, you know, Jordan and, and Christine. Uh, but we can actually sort these columns. So we might want to say instead of sort instead of seeing all that John took in this manner, we might want to see uh, an aggregation of okay, John took eight courses, right? So there's all kinds of ways again that we can slice and dice the data, um, and whether it's what they've completed, what they haven't completed, what they fail, what they are to do yet. Uh, what's coming up for recurrency, any, again, any um, information that goes into the database can be queried out. Now, I think the coup de grace on the reporting piece is the ability, um, well, two, two, two cool things. Um, one, you can subscribe to the report. So you can have this report sent to you on an increment. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of emailing reports. Um, mainly my, my, issue with them is that as soon as I send you a report out of the system, it's out of date. Um, you know, I, I may receive a report that says Dallas hasn't done something on Friday, not looked to it, at it until Sunday and realize that while she's being a soccer mom, she did it you know, on Saturday. And so I may jump down Dallas's throat without logging back in and Dallas said, well, dude, chill out. You know, I did it at the soccer field. So I like more the, the implementation that says, hey, Dallas manager, why don't you log in and view your report? And it's, again, it's available immediately. So um, just conceptually and philosophically, I, I don't like it, but the clients wanted it, so we created it, which is a, you'll hear a common refrain here. Um, it, and you see the increments that you can schedule these reports to run. But uh, the second, and I think most important, boy, this thing is sensitive for my little, my little fingers, um, is the ability to create um, an ad hoc report. So again, going back to the ability to now query and sort, uh, the data is limitless. Literally, it's limitless. So you see here's some options here. I mentioned this in passing before, but if we decide to create a, an assessment or a survey, you actually can capture question level reporting data, which would allow you um, to see maybe the most missed question, uh, which, of course, in turn would allow you to say, well, did we ask the question poorly? Is our, does our deck not cover it well? Or by instructor, we may notice that there's a trend that a certain instructor's uh, trainees missed that question. So that might be an instructor issue. Um, 
most common is going to be your, your course report. Obviously, you can name it and you can save it for uh, one-time re uh, reporting. Next time, you just click. You can share it. Um, you know, again, you can go and, and have it run on, a, on an increment of your choosing. So if we look at our off-the-shelf report, you know, now we can start drilling down using the filters based on, hey, maybe we want to search by user. Or maybe we want to search by a course name, and then we can customize the date field. This is not dissimilar for those who are um, familiar. It's not dissimilar to like a Salesforce reporting tool. It's, it's a business intelligence tool. Um, and we're building our query, and we're customizing our query. And then what shoots out of that query, you'll see um, listed here. And then you see our little uh, buttons where we can group by or edit the columns. And then you can actually hide details as well, um, certainly on, on, a, on a short demo like this. Um, you know, there, we could get way into the weeds, but I think that the main takeaway is uh, this is a, and this is not coming from me, this is coming from industry analysts like, like Burson and Brandon Hall. This is the industry leading reporting engine. And if you sort of dovetail that comment with my first comment, which is why do people buy an LMS? Well, for reporting, although that's not the, you know, the sexiest of reasons, if that is the reason. We want to be really, really good at it. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that we've got all the information. Uh, the one thing that for those who don't have an LMS or who may be on an LMS currently and looking to move, um, we do pull in historical records from your system, your current provider, or a lot of times they're using an access database or something like that. We do that bulk import and it's available in reporting as well. Very good. All right, so we've just got a, a few minutes left here um, and um, want to get back to um, kind of really kind of wrap things up. Um, we're going to see if there's any last minute uh, questions coming in. Um, Dallas, any last minute uh, questions that we want to address? I do have one that just came up. How scalable is the LMS? Are there limitations based on an organization's size? Mm -hmm. Do you have to be huge to yeah, use good, this? Yeah, good question. Um, this is something that sounds so pie in the sky and so um, 60s flower child, but uh, when it comes to learning and the learning management system, your only limitation is your imagination, honestly. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe budget, <laughs> but we are pretty affordable. Um, I have clients as small as 50 employees, and I have clients who have over 100,000 employees. Um, I would say, and even, you know, what? Well, that's probably not fair. I mean, my 50 employee clients might be doing more in terms of usage of the functionality than my 100,000 person client. If it's like a, um, you know, if it's like a small regional airline, I mean, those pilots, the amount of training they have to take in the learning paths, a pilot might have 50 learning paths, right? You know, based on the, the aircraft that they fly. So, um, you know, really the, uh, the challenge is not so much budget or size. Uh, of the organization, the challenge is making sure we have a good plan. As long as we have a good plan, it should be great. Yep. Good. Um, Did that answer it? Yes. Did perfect. I filibuster there, or is that okay? That that's to be determined by the reader. Perfect. <laughs> well, I like the answer. Um, yeah. And one, maybe. It's okay. We have a couple more coming in. Um, can you give us an example of how? The social tool yeah. that you introduced, Tribe, would mm -hmm. work in tandem with the LMS, or should that be held for a the other demo? It probably, what I can do is I can send a link um, to a, a webinar that we did on Tribe. That's probably the best thing as a next okay. step. Um, but the short of it is, within the course properties, you can link a Tribe, okay? And think of a Tribe, well, think of a Tribe in two ways. Think of a Tribe, one, as a private group so a tribe might be you know again the sales department it might be my football team you know, my little guy football team um, it's a private group uh, we leverage tribe to communicate with that group and as it relates to a, co a course in the learning management system it becomes yet another learning resource for that course so you might where I see it most often implemented is we'll have an instructor-led course followed by a survey followed by office hours in tribe for the subject matter expert for Q&A to happen. But a tribe is not dissimilar to what Kevin showed on the blogs and the forums. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's an area for us to place information, to upload uh, data like, like videos, YouTube, uh, Word documents, and the like. 
Great. Uh, the rest of these questions are pretty specific, so I'll just answer those in email. Sure. Um, but thank Very you. good. Well, we appreciate everybody's time this afternoon. Hope um, we were able to uh, address the, the topics that we uh, laid out. And um, again, there, I know there's a, a number of additional questions that we will address um, you know, outside of uh, the remaining time that we have since we're up. Um, but again, appreciate the, the time. Um, and if there's any other questions that you have, please don't hesitate to, um, to reach back out. And uh, we'd be more than happy to follow up with any of you with uh, more in-depth uh, demos of um, the learning module itself or any of the other modules um, associated with talent performance. Definitely. Enjoy the conversation. And just so you all are aware, we will be sending out a recording of this webinar, so feel free to um, share it. And we look forward to your attendance in one of our future webinars. And thank you for your participation. Bye, guys. Thanks so much.